This past week, a very beautiful miracle took place in Naples, in Italy. It was seen by many, many people. It was even caught on film, and it was reported in the news, not only in Italy, but in different parts of the world, including here in America. It was even reported in the secular news, which is run by people who don't believe in miracles, certainly, and generally don't even believe in God. The miracle involved a relic of a, of a holy martyr named St. Januarius. St. Januarius was a bishop and a martyr of the early church. Under the reign of the emperor Diocletian, he was arrested for being a Christian and for being a bishop too, and he was sentenced to death. He was thrown into a furnace, but he was miraculously preserved from being burned so that not even a single hair of his head was singed. And then he was given to lions to eat, but the lions miraculously refused to eat him. So finally he was beheaded. And all of this took place in Naples around the year 300. The bones of St. Januarius are buried under the altar of a church in Naples, and a reliquary with his blood in it is kept in a bank vault in the same place, in the same city. On the feast of St. Januarius, which was September 19th, a few days ago, the reliquary with his blood in it was taken out of the, the bank vault and it was brought to the church. And of course, the blood of St. Januarius was shed many centuries ago, so it is, it is dried and congealed, like, like dried blood. <coughs> But when it was brought into the church near the, the bones of the saint, it was held up, and at that very moment, by the power of God, the dried and congealed blood became liquid. It became red and, and complete, completely liquid, as if it had just been shed. And it was held up so that everyone in the church was able to see this, and it was the rotated back and forth so people could see that it was actually liquid and it was, it was flowing back and forth in the, in the glass reliquary. This miracle, as beautiful and as amazing as it was, was not a surprise. It actually takes place every single year on September 19th, the Feast of St. Januarius. And it has been taking place for many centuries now. The first record we have of this miracle dates all the way back to the year 1389. And we can easily assume that it had been happening for many years before that. The first record of it implies that it, it was something that was already known. It, for all we know, it may well have been taking place every year since the death of St. Januarius. This miracle happens not only on the Feast of St. Januarius every year, but also on the first Sunday of May every year, and also on December 16th of every year, too. On December 16th, it liquefies in order to commemorate an occasion in which this same relic was carried in procession to ask for God's protection against the eruptions of Mount Vesuvius, and God miraculously preserved the city from danger, by the intercession of this great martyr. Sometimes when this, the blood miraculously liquefies, it actually bubbles up and fills the whole container that it's in. It becomes larger, uh, greater in quantity than it was when it was dry. In fact, in 1902, there were Several scientists who weighed it both before and after the miracle, so both in its dried form, the normal dried form, and then in liquid form on his feast day. And they discovered that the reliquary becomes almost an ounce heavier when the blood is liquid because of the way it miraculously increases in volume. After the blood liquefies, it is left in the church near the bones of the saint and it remains in liquid state for the entire octave of the saint's feast, after which it again becomes dry and solid, and then it is put away until, until the next occasion to bring it out. 
The church has kept very precise reports of this miracle since the 17th century every year. And it happens regularly, three times a year, just like clockwork. And it continues to happen even now that the men who perform the ceremony don't have the faith, and some of them probably don't even believe that it's a miracle. This miracle has been happening every year for many centuries, as I said, and it continues to happen even today in these times of almost universal apostasy. And it is quite possible that it will continue to happen till the end of the world. It's one of those permanent and perpetual and public miracles of the church. Most normal miracles involve a one-time event, someone being healed or something similar to that, and they only happen for the benefit of a few people, usually only someone who is healed and maybe his immediate family knows that he, well, he received a miracle from God. Or at best, other people can re- only read an account of this miracle in a book, maybe, and, and just take it on faith. But with a miracle like the one that happened a few days ago, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, it's like it belongs to the whole world. Anyone can go to Naples at this very moment and walk into that church and, and, and walk up to the reliquary and see the liquid in it right now. There used to be videos on, on YouTube of this miracle taking place. Sometimes they get people uh, take them down. But I, I would recommend, if you're interested, just do a search on YouTube. You, you might be able to see a video of it taking place. This is a public and a perpetual miracle. This is a very special thing because God usually only shows his power to people who believe in him. And even among believers, only a very, very few of us will ever have the great privilege of witnessing a a real miracle in our lifetimes. They're normally something very rare. But the blood of St. Januarius is an exception to all of these general rules of God. Anyone can see it, even pagans and atheists and unbelievers. And not only can they see it, but they can verify it for themselves that it is truly a miracle. For example, in 1989, some scientists did an analysis of the blood. They used an instrument called a prism spectroscope, which is a device that measures the the frequencies of of light that pass through a a liquid or any substance. And by measuring the, the frequencies and colors of the light that come out the other side, they can tell what that substance is that it is passing through. And this experiment proved scientifically that the substance inside the glass is truly blood. This confirms that this is a miracle because by the law of nature, dried blood that was shed hundreds of years ago cannot suddenly become liquid, much less can it do it only on a certain day of the year. This is one of the great public miracles of the church, but it's certainly not the only one. There are other miracles like the incorrupt bodies of the saints, some of which look like the saint just died. Even though these saints have been dead for many, many years, in many cases their their flesh is still moist and soft. There's no natural explanation for how these, these corpses can remain in this condition without any embalming or any preservative. And yet, these, the bodies of these saints also are on display in, in churches, in, in Europe mostly, for anyone to see. Anyone can go into those churches and, and see for themselves. But the only way that these things are possible is if there is a God and if he is making these things happen by his divine power. There is no other explanation for the the thrice annual miracle of of the blood of St. Januarius. There are other miracles like this too. There are the Eucharistic miracles, the, the, the miracles in which a sacred host turned into flesh during Mass. The most famous one of these is the one in Lanciano in Italy. 
This happened when, in the year 700, there was a priest saying Mass, and when he said the words of consecration, he allowed a doubt against the faith, against the doctrine of the real presence, to stay in his mind. And immediately the host changed into a piece of human flesh, and the contents of the chalice turned into blood. And these have also been preserved and venerated in a reliquary ever since. These are also on display for anyone to see. These have also been subject to scientific analysis. In 1970, there was an Italian doctor and a scientist who examined this miraculous host. And he, he saw that it was a piece of, of flesh from a human heart, in fact. He said the blood was certainly human blood. And both the flesh and the blood had the same blood type, which was blood type AB. In 1970, the scientific um, analysis of DNA didn't exist, but they were able to see what blood type it was. And the heart tissue even contained some of the most important nerves and other parts of the human heart. Then in 1973, the World Health Organization which is an entirely pagan institution, appointed a commission of scientists to study this miraculous host, and they reached the same results. It's just proof that that this host also is miraculous, and it's an interesting thought to think about the fact that when our Lord changed the host into his flesh, well over a, a, a millennium ago, he knew that it would be a thousand years before mankind would discover that that tissue came from his sacred heart. I wish I had more time to talk about some of these other public miracles, like like the Shroud of Turin, or the picture of Our Lady of Good Counsel in Italy that is hanging suspended in the air, or even some here in North America, like the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe and, and the miraculous staircase in New Mexico. But it would be better to finish up by thinking about why God performs these miracles that everyone is able to see. And I think the main reason for it is to show his power and to strengthen our faith. God knows that it is a struggle for us to believe in the supernatural. Normally we rely on our senses for everything that that we know And it's hard for us to believe in the supernatural because we're not able to see it. And we know that God exists and that the Catholic religion is true, but we believe that by faith. And faith, by definition, is a belief in something we can't see. But it is hard to believe in something that we can't see, especially nowadays when everyone around us doesn't believe in, in the supernatural in general. And so sometimes God has compassion on our weakness by giving us something that we can see that will strengthen our faith, such as these miracles. And not only can we see these miracles, but we also see the foolish and absurd ways in which non-believers try to explain them away and make fools of themselves in the process. For example, some atheists have attempted to explain away the miracle of St. Januarius by saying that that substance inside the glass is not actually blood. They say that it's some other chemical that, that turns liquid when it gets warm. And this is in spite of the fact that scientific experiments have proved that that liquid is in fact blood. And also the fact that the miracle takes place in in very different ranges of temperature. So mid-September every year is a time when the temperature varies quite a bit from one year to the next. And yet, without fail, his his blood is liquefied. St. Alphonsus spoke about these sorts of things, and he actually made an interesting statement about the blood of St. Januarius, too. He said... This is a most stupendous miracle, and one that is greatly celebrated in the church. The liquefying and boiling up of this blessed martyr's blood, when 
whenever the vials are brought into the sight of the head of, of the saint. He says, this miracle is renewed many times in the year in the presence of all who desire to witness it. Yet some heretics have endeavored to throw a doubt upon its genuineness by frivolous and incoherent, incoherent explanations. But no one can deny the effect to be miraculous unless he is prepared to deny the evidence of his own senses. Just to conclude, someone might be wondering if the miracle of St. Januarius is any proof that the Novus Ordo religion is the Catholic Church, since it now takes place in a Novus Ordo Church. This is a very good question, but the answer is no. The miracle proves the holiness of St. Januarius, and it proves the power of God. But it is not intended to vouch for the, the particular circumstances in which it is currently taking place. This is a miracle that God has apparently ordained should take place every single year. As I said, maybe until the end of the world, we don't know. And even though the people who place the, who bring his blood into the church are in a different religion, that doesn't mean that God has to make that miracle stop happening. Imagine if a church containing the body of a, an incorrupt saint fell into the hands of, of schismatics or heretics or even Muslims. We wouldn't expect the body of the saint to immediately start to decay. And as soon as they, they took possession of the church, the reason is that the miracle of the saint's body is intended to verify the saint and the religion of that saint and that saint's holiness not the people who currently own the building. And so we could say the same about the blood of St. Januarius. And besides, St. Januarius was a traditional Catholic. He was put to death because he refused to engage in pagan worship. And the Nova Sordo Church does not refuse to engage in pagan worship. In fact, they actively, uh, they actively do that. So... Their religion is different from that of St. Januarius, and yet we do not see the blood of any Novus Ordo bishops who are deceased having any miraculous power like this. So let us pray to St. Januarius to strengthen our faith in this time of unbelief. This week, his blood in the reliquary will revert back to its natural dried condition, and it will be put away again until till December. But even though the miracle will cease until next time, the proof that it gives us of God's existence and of his true religion will never go away. And we should take advantage of this gift from God. We should meditate on it and use it to help us strengthen our faith. But we shouldn't use it as a crutch in the sense that our faith shouldn't depend completely on, on miracles like this. Rather, it's more of like one piece of data supporting a, a large and complex but certainly true argument for our faith. It's one piece of the puzzle why we believe in the Catholic faith. But just as the miracle of St. Januarius is real, so everything else that the Church teaches is also real, particularly about heaven and hell and our souls. Let us always live our lives in such a way that we live up to what we believe by our holy faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.